Father, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for sending Jesus. We're just asking for a special, just a special encounter. Lord, I'm asking for special encounters with you tonight and tomorrow morning and as we go to bed tonight. Just special encounters with you of your love and your kindness. Just the story of Christmas being so clear. Not just a story, not just a gift, but an invitation to come to you through your son Jesus. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. You can grab a chair tonight. Thank you for being with us this Christmas Eve. As we look, great anticipation. I know for many homes tomorrow morning, great anticipation. Lots, lots to be done. You know, the story of Christmas is what we're going to talk about here in a moment. We're going to actually receive uh, tonight just uh, for, for our church. This is Sunday. We didn't have Sunday morning service. This is um, Sunday mornings, Christmas Eve, all in one. And so we're going to receive our tithes and offerings here in a moment just for those that are in this house, just a special time uh, to give to the Lord. And, um, and so if you're here and you're a guest, we're no pressure whatsoever. Um, but I wanted to share a story with everyone here um, in, re- in the Christmas story. You know, you might read in the Gospels the story, especially in Matthew and Luke, just the accounts and the portions of, uh, of the coming of Jesus and how God worked with men and women like you and me. Uh, to bring about his will on this earth. He had to go through Mary and he had to go through Joseph and there were shepherds and there was wise men and there was people in the temple. And I wanted to just share this, this, this short passage in Matthew uh, because I believe it, it, it's significant for you and me to not wait until Jesus finished the work. And, you know, sometimes we wait to rejoice until we see everything done, until the presents are wrapped and the bow is on it. How many of you know you can rejoice when just when the fact that the gift have got you got the gifts there, right? We don't have to wait until it's, uh, it's wrapped and bow and everything's on it. And this is this picture of a guy in the temple. And he was promised by the Lord, the Holy Spirit, that he would see the Christ, the Savior. You know, when Jesus came, he was going to be the Savior. He was sent as the Savior, but he still had to finish the work. Did you know Jesus coming and this what we're celebrating? It was the gift. And what we're really celebrating in this time is really a prophetic. You're celebrating Jesus. This is they, they were celebrating Jesus, a gift that hadn't paid a price yet. They didn't wait to rejoice because the gift came. And, and, and if God started it, how many of you know he'll finish it? He's faithful to finish what he started in your life, in my life. He is the author, but he's also a finisher. And so there's this passage, if you'll put it up, and this is the story of Simeon. Now there's a man in Jerusalem called uh, Simeon who was the righteous, he was righteous and devout, and he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And, and the Holy Spirit was on him. So here's this, this man in the temple. It says, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Savior or Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. What did that look like today? I just feel like I'm supposed to go to the temple today. You know, I really probably should get to church tonight. I know it's Christmas Eve, and I know I got all this going on, but you know, could we, maybe there's some families here that you weren't planning on coming tonight, but you're like, hey, you know, maybe we just should go. Just, just, just saying, just to maybe hear from the, just, I don't know why, we just need to go. Prompted. Sometimes we make too much of just the, the small nudge, the still small voice. We don't, we don't acknowledge it. That's the Holy Spirit. Directing your steps, directing your in my life, directing our children. And he says that he was directed by the Spirit. He went into the temple courts. And when the parents, where Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus before him, as what was required by the law, keep on going. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. He saw him. The Holy Spirit was with him. He saw him. He took him in his arms and he praised God. He praised God. He hadn't, passed, he hadn't died on the cross yet. Yet he praised God This and declared something. Declared the promise before he, and rejoiced over a promise before he saw it fully fulfilled. Go on. It says, The Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, he said. For my eyes have seen your salvation. What, what a statement. I've seen your salvation. You start what you started. It was a baby. A lot of things could have went on. 
You could have said it this way. A lot of things could go wrong. Don't wait to rejoice when you've been given the gift, the gift of hope. You know, there's so many times that God gives us a little a glimpse of, of promise, a little glimpse of hope. Jesus is the hope of the world. He, he got given a hope. He held hope in his hand, and he rejoiced. And he says, you could, now I can go. I've seen the Messiah, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. Last verse. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. We're going to receive our tithes and offerings tonight, and then after we do that, we're going to transition into the reading of the Christmas story. Um, I believe it's going to be very special. The story that we're going to talk about and read tonight, it's a story that's changed stories. It's not just a story. It's a story that changed my story. It's a a story that's changed your story. It's a story that's still changing stories today. And this is why we tell it. This is why we remember it. This is why we account and we lay it out and we, and we tell it year after year after year because it's still changing stories. Let's, let's pray before we receive our tithes and offerings. Father, thank you tonight for every person here, for every family. Father, we thank you that you are truly the one who finishes. We thank you that you are, are, are working in families. You're working in, in bodies to bring healing. You're working in marriages to bring restoration and, and in fathers to turn their hearts to children and, and towards, the, towards their wives, to, in wives. We thank you, you're working. Uh, it, it just you're working. And so we just say thank you tonight for working. Thank you for working. Lord, we commit these tithes and these offerings to you, to your work, to your service. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead and give. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest upon his shoulders, and his name will be given, called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or the peace of his throne, and over his kingdom to establish it and uphold it with justice and righteousness, and from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. God sent an angel Gabriel to Nazareth to a village in Galilee to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her. God has chosen to bless you, and you will become pregnant and have a son, and you're to name him Jesus. He will be very great 
and he will be called the Son of the Most High. But Mary asked the angel, how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. While Mary was still a virgin, she became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her fiancé, being just a man, decided to break the engagement off quietly so he did not embarrass her publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, don't be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary, for the child that is in her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this has happened to fulfill the Lord's message that was spoken through his prophet. Behold the virgin, she will conceive a child, and she will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. This prophecy from Isaiah 7:14 was given 700 years before Jesus was born. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin un until her son was born. And at that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout all the Roman Empire. All returned to their own towns to register for the census. census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled, traveled from the village of Nazareth in Galilee and took with him Mary, his wife, who was great with child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. She gave birth to her first son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. That night there were shepherds in the field Thank you, Lord. <laughs> mm. And the angel showed up, and I lost my spot. <laughs> said, don't be afraid. I bring to you good news for everyone a Savior. Yeah, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born, and I did it again. Don't touch the screen. Oh, hold on. Don't keep, let it keep playing. Sorry, guys. The angels left and the shepherds said to each other, come, let us go to Bethlehem and see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. The shepherds told everyone what had happened, and, and, and the angel said unto them about the child. All who heard their story were astonished, but Mary kept these things in her heart, and the shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. And at that time, wise men came from the east to Jerusalem and they asked, where is this, this newborn, the king of the Jews? We've seen his star that arose and we've come to worship him. Herod was deeply disturbed by the questions, as was all of Jerusalem. He called a meeting with all the leading priests and teachers of religious law. Where did the prophets say the Messiah will be born, he asked. In Bethlehem, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. O Bethlehem of Judea, you're not just a lowly village of Judah, for a ruler will come to you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. This prophecy is found in Micah 5, verse 2, and 2 Samuel 5, verse 2, both written 700 years before Jesus was born. So Herod sent a message to the wise men, asking them to come 
to, so he could see him at this meeting. He learned at the exact time when the first star was to appear. And he told them, go to Bethlehem. Search diligently for the child. When you find him, come and tell me that I too may go and worship him. After this meeting, the wise men went on their way. And once again, the star appeared to them to be a guide all the way to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy and they entered a house. They entered the house where the child and his mother were and they fell down and they worshiped him and they opened their treasure chest and they gave him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. But when it, was, when it was time to leave, they went another way because God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod will try to kill the child. That very night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. Herod was furious when he learned that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the babies, all the baby boys that were in Bethlehem and around the area who were two years old and under because the wise men had told him that the star had first appeared just two years before. Then later, when Herod died, God's angel appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up now, take the child and his mother and return to Israel. All those who wish to murder the child are now dead. So Joseph obeyed. He arose and he took the child and his mother and he re-entered Israel. When he had heard that Herod's son had taken over the ki as king of Judea, he was afraid to go there. But then Joseph was directed in a dream to go to the hills of Galilee. And on arriving, he settled in the village of Nazareth, fulfilling the words of the prophets that he will be called a Nazarene. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. And this, and this is the story of Christmas. This is the gift. This is the invitation. This is the hope for humanity. Jesus. Jesus, the hope, the invitation, the gift. Tonight, we're going to receive communion. And I wanted to put up one scripture. And I wanted to read that before we started even getting our elements together. I said, uh, Jesus, you know, we think about him so many times as the gift. But as I was getting ready for this service, this Christmas Eve, I heard so clearly in my heart, it's more than a gift. Jesus is more than a gift. He's an invitation. In this verse, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, every time you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about the Lord's death until he comes. I just want to tell you about Jesus tonight. He was a gift because God loved us so much. And God loves you so much. He's a gift. But that gift that was sent, it was the start of a work that he finished when he gave his life. 
when he died on the cross, when his body was beaten in place of ours. And the blood that was shed, it was a new covenant, a new agreement that he was making with you and me. See, the good news of the gospel is this, that God made a way when we couldn't. God sent his son, Jesus, as a baby to die on a cross for us. That's the story. It's the story of Christmas. It's the story of the good news of the gospel. That if anyone just would believe in him, they wouldn't perish, but they would have everlasting life. It would be just like that song, Away in a Manger. We were singing it today. Now, and it went on to say, the second verse, we often overlook these verses and take us to heaven to be with the there. You know, that's his hope. I think that in, at Christmas time, um, it's, it's a time of hope for families. It's a time where maybe families are coming together. It can sometimes be darkest times because of past or who you're not with. Or, but can I tell you that as much as Christmas is a time uh, for us, it's a, ho- a time for hope for the Lord, where the, he's, he's so thankful, so hopeful that the message and the story of his love would be told again. Just the, the message and the story of his love through Jesus would be told again that if anyone would call upon the name of the Lord, they could be saved because he made a way so that there could be a re- reuniting in heaven again. So if you'll put that verse back up, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Tonight we're going to say and we're going to proclaim by receiving communion, Jesus not only lived, but he suffered. His body was given in place of ours and his blood was shed as the payment of our sins. And this is what I declare to you. If you're not born again, if you've never called and made Jesus the Lord of your life, believed in your hearts, spoken with your mouth, I'm declaring to you that Jesus is Lord. We're telling you about Jesus, his sacrifice, to where all you have to do is call on him. It's not a religious service. It doesn't have to take place in a church. It takes place when you, out of your heart, release your words and you call upon him as Savior. We'll take the bread tonight. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, this is Paul writing to the church at Corinth. He said, I'm communicating to you what happened. Jesus took bread after they had eaten and he took this bread and he broke it. So we break this body and he said, this is my body that was beaten, broken in place of yours in place of yours he said do this and remember me take eat Lord thank you tonight for Jesus in place of us the substitute thank you and he said that he took a cup and he said that this cup It represents a new covenant, a new agreement that I'm going to make with you tonight. My blood, your righteousness. Not your works, but my blood, your righteousness. The blood of Jesus that makes us white as snow, that removes sins, stains of sin, not just sins, the stain of sin tonight. It removes the stain, the memory, the history, as far as the east is from the rest. And so tonight, Lord, we take this cup and we remember your blood is our righteousness. We declare it tonight. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. 
thank you for Jesus and the invitation to be with you. The hope of heaven to fill our hearts. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Tonight we're going to be closing our service uh, with a candlelight song and then after we're done singing, we're going to just pray over uh, Pastor Evan and myself. We're going to come up here and we're going to just pray over the congregation um, after we blow out our candles and maybe just put, we'll be able to put our hands on one another and just uh, thank the Lord and, and thank the Lord for a wonderful year, but for even a brighter tomorrow. And so if you'll come forward um, in the buckets as they pass by, there's glow sticks in the buckets. There's also candles. And uh, we're going to sing Silent Night. Thank you, guys. stand make it easier there's something significant about light isn't there you're going to watch tonight you can't hardly see the face of those a few chairs over but you're going to watch as light fills this room things hidden will be revealed
Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. And so Keep them lit for a second. We're just going to pray over, over families tonight. Father, thank you for family. Thank you for family that's not even just blood. For friends. For the body. For relationships. Lord, I'm asking for the, in this holiday season just for a restoration of relationships. Friends, family, fathers, sons, mothers, family. I thank you for your blessing of hope to fill hearts and to fill minds. Bright eyes, bright eyes in a bright future. Bright eyes seeing a bright future. Free from depression. Free from a hurting heart joy in the house joy in the house we thank you for it in Jesus name amen amen I know you know we're gonna in our house we exchange presents a few maybe Christmas Eve and then Christmas morning but can I tell you the presents that the greatest present you can give is not with a T, it's with a C. In other words, your presence. And you know, it's really easy to get caught behind our phones, isn't it? Get caught behind something. I just want to encourage you to be present this holiday season. Ooh. Hey, you know what? It's fun. I love that we can laugh in church. I love that you can mess up. You know the Lord loves just a heart to honor Him. So you don't have to get everything perfect. Tomorrow there's going to be some things that don't get open just right and everything just doesn't go just right. Just but remember why you did what you did. Remember why you came tonight. Remember who's with you. You know? And that you only have so many moments. You only have so many moments. So I encourage you to take those, treasure them. God bless you. Have a great night. Yep. Merry Christmas. We love you all so much. You can Merry blow Christmas. out your candles, and then at the doors over to your left, we have uh, trash cans that you can put those in. Yeah, Thank you to, all so much. Try to not blow wax. Yeah, try to not blow wax if possible. <laughs>